All right, we've got to talk about Panette. I feel like it's been too long. This unit is insane. So on my first playthrough, I can honestly say I underutilized this unit. But on my third and fourth playthrough, honestly, I think she's going to be a default unit I always run. For minimal investment, you can have one of the most deadly one-rounders in the game. Like as early as chapter 13. And you can build her to be a monster as soon as you get her. And it takes almost nothing. She, You get her with 1500 SP, so you can immediately get her Axe Power 1. And Mentorship. You can get both of these things. Or I'm sorry, you can't get Mentorship right away, because you, you have to beat Chapter 15. However, you get Axe Power 1 immediately, she gets some more damage. You can throw a Brave Axe on her with Pike. And this, like on Berserker, on Warrior, either is fine. Eventually you will have to switch her off of Berserker because she does hit a Dex Cap, which is really stupid. I don't know why it's so low. Um, usually I ignore Caps on classes because most of them are so high that in Maddening, you're never gonna hit those. But 25 Dex is very low <laughs> and she will hit that cap. So you can leave her on Berserker for like five to 10 levels and like she won't hit the cap, so you'll be fine. And then you can switch her over to Warrior. Unfortunately though, her on Berserker looks sick as fuck and her on Warrior, have to say, <laughs> not a fan of the appearance. <laughs> Cause she goes from looking really cool and unique and having like an awesome like gothy dress that matches her hair and accessory to this like generic thing now if warrior looked like this and she had warrior in her colors i'd be all for it because saphir's warrior outfit looks pretty cool and there's like metal pieces uh the boots look good the gloves look cool there's like armor stuff around the neck that looks pretty interesting the gauntlets are huge Looks pretty nice. This looks like a warrior. This, I'm not sure what this looks like, but ignoring the negative style, it's she's still an insane unit and she will one round a lot of things. And on this build, especially on warrior, she does get access to bows. So you can throw a long bow on her, a silver bow, or I'm sorry, a steel bow. She only has C in bows. She's not able to wield S rank, or I'm sorry, A rank, B rank. <laughs> I'm like getting my, my ranks confused. Weirdly though, she doesn't have an axe affinity, even though she's a berserker. She actually has a dagger affinity. I don't know why that is, uh, but she is just gonna be A in, a in uh, axes, which doesn't matter. That still gets you brave axe. I think they did this to nerf her, honestly, because if she could have the extra rank on axes, she could go into Wyvern with her high strength, because she has high base strength, and then use Brave Axe on Wyvern, which would be disgusting. But unfortunately, Brave Axe is A rank, and on Wyvern, she's just B in axes. So she has daggers as a kind of nerf. Now, should you run her on daggers? I don't think so. You could if you want to, but this Brave Axe build is crazy. Uh, so let's demo it. So this is... I'm, I'm beating this chapter. I have to beat this and then I have to I have to beat this a few times to uh, come up with a guide for it. So the easiest way to do this, we're going to talk to Saphir. Cantor helps, but we can I'm dance. Serious. We can do some tactics here. So let's demo. So you want to get Saphir out of there. Uh, you can throw a tank into the mix. Now, this dude warps in two enemies that can easily kill Saphir. This map is a bit of a troll in that way. Uh, I'm going to put fire here so that she can tank. I could use Corrin, but it doesn't matter. I guess I could use Corrin. It's right there. We'll use a cannon. Why not? All right, then these guys have to get out. And on this playthrough, I don't have enough flyers. I usually have at least four flyers so that they can get out for free. You can't go down those stairs over there. Uh, so she's going to... Pop Ike and wait, and then the rest of these can kind of move up. There's going to be some enemies to whack, so don't you worry. Just want to demo the build. Now, you don't have to run Erica on her, but it does help her penetrate armor, and it'll keep her one-rounding things until late game. All right, these dudes are going to deal some damage. Timera should be able to tank it, though. Yeah. San Ooh, it's 133. Or 135, I couldn't see it as fast. Sandstorm crit. This is why Tamara is a good tank. Some people some people shit on Tamara. Some people say Tamara's not that good. 
Tamara is a pretty good tank. All right, so now let's see. All right, so here is like a hand. She can use Tomahawk too. She has different tools. So she can use Tomahawk. She can use Bow. Tomahawk hits really hard. Honestly, you don't need the Silver Bow because you have a Tomahawk. Let's be real. Tomahawk is a high might weapon. And with this engraving, it's very accurate. And it's basically her surefire hit. Now, if I want to get her in there, unfortunately, I can't dance or warp her. I can, like, move Tamara. Honestly, I could probably physic her and she'd probably start fighting these if I did something like this. Let me at him. You, you want to kill these guys. Oh, I made it to... I should have pushed it back. Yeah, I should have pushed it back a tile. Because she can't canter. But she probably could kill one of these. Let me see. Yeah, if she changes weapons, she can double. So she has, she has some weapons. She has a Steel Lance. Yeah, she can kill these with doubling. Look at that crit rate, too. She's got crit. She has Sandstorm procs. She takes no damage on counterattack. Easily kills these. They'll teleport more dudes in. I can physic her. But this is not a Tamara video. I just need to move her <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> All right, let's just move. We'll get some enemies in here. I'll let them in, too. And then we'll get a physic off. Really, we want to see Panette pop off. That's what we're here for. Gotta burn the healers. Alright, they're just gonna warp in some more guys. It's very funny. Alright, I don't care if someone dies here. I'm just trying to show Panette. I would have put fire down. I wouldn't have allowed that, obviously. <laughs> I might actually have Tanera. Tanera? Tamara nuke those dudes in the center because if I just put the fire one tile in, she can just double them and kill them. And tank all the things that teleport in. So I'm actually gonna use that as part of my guide. Obviously, I'm not going to let Saline die. They'd be fired down. So the enemies are forced to fight Tamara on my terms. And then I could have all these other flying units dive in and kill the rest. All right. But let's see what Panette can do. All right. So here's her attacking with a Tomahawk. All right. So that's just a single hit weapon. Now let's look at her attacking with the Brave Axe. Look at this damage. Look at that damage output. 66 damage. And because it's Brave, it all happens before they counterattack. Now this enemy is a little bit higher avoid, but as she levels up on Warrior, and she will level up fast, she can one round enemies from full health. That, that will give you the maximum amount of XP. She will power level herself easily. This is massive damage. So the only thing that you have to really worry about or concern yourself with is increasing her hit. So you could run, so instead of running Mentor, I'm sorry, Mentorship, you could run like hit plus 15 on her, hit plus 10. And that'll push her up to, like, high 90s for literally most enemies. So, like, this dude, uh, 23 speed, some avoid. Also, things like supports help. So, she's, like, B support with Ivy here. So, if Ivy attacked something or whatever, it was just nearby. And then Panette attacks. That pushes her to 100%. So, it's actually not that difficult to get her to, to 100%. She's a really good boss killer. And this is not the exception. This is the rule. This is her average. Her average is one rounding things with this weapon. It is absolutely crazy. And as far as I can tell, it's going to be end game viable because she has high strength growth and her base, her bases are crazy for strength. She also has decent health, but look at like you basically, and she's not even a glass cannon. Cause even though she gets doubled, she has high enough health and decent enough defense where she usually doesn't die on counterattack or if something hits her. So she can usually take a hit, which is very nice. You can also run Ike on her instead of Erica. Ike on her would be crazy. Ike on her would enable her to take half damage so that when she gets doubled, it matters less. Ike also increases defense and it increases strength. And I think also health. Let me see. Does it do health? Yeah, it increases health, strength, and defense. So this, like, putting Ike on Fanat could allow her to be this, like, psycho axe killer who also is a tank because she would get the increased defense. All right, so let's see. Bond level of, I think she has 15 right now, Tamara does, 16. So you, so bond level of 20, I think, is, like, plus 8 health. It might even be plus 10, but you get a lot of health, you get a lot of strength, you get a lot of defense. So plus more, four more defense on Panette, plus taking half damage, all that adds up. 
and it could allow her to be a brawler. So if you don't even want to use Tamara at all, and you just want to use Panat as your tank damage nuke, throw Ike on her. But if you want her to be as damaging as possible, Erica is a great option uh, because it allows her to ignore high defense by adding it to her damage to some degree. Now she could also switch to Afarium, 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 whatever, and he gives plus three damage. So against enemies that have low defense, you could switch to that. Uh, but this one's also good because you now take three less damage. So this, so I'd say Erica or Ike, very useful on her. Both kind of work, both scale her damage, both make her more tanky. And Twin Strike can one round. So usually if you use Twin Strike on a boss, it'll deplete a health bar. It'll kill an enemy outright. Like if I Twin Strike this, it'd probably just kill it outright. Uh, if she attacks this, so she has 50 attack on her Brave Axe. This dude has 35 defense, so he would take 30 damage from her just Brave Axing this. That's not bad. It's just 15 times 2. So that's pretty decent for no setup at all, just attacking an enemy. Like one of the highest defense things in the game, these dudes. So yeah, that's Panette. She's crazy. Honestly, I think she is an S tier unit. I definitely undervalued her in my first run because I think I'd left her on Berserker for a while and then switched her into like Wolf Knight or something weird because I noticed she had daggers. So I'm like, oh, maybe she's a dagger unit. But honestly, keep her on Berserker for five to 10 levels, maybe five levels and then switch her over. The Berserker has better build and strength growth than Warrior, just slightly so. But Warrior obviously has bows. The main reason I don't like Warrior is the appearance, but it's a good class. If it looked like this, like how Saphir looks, I would love it. Because Saphir looks pretty cool. She does look older than she actually is. She's actually 35, which is weird. So yeah, that's it for this one. Just a quick, well, 12 minute. Not super quick, but a reasonable length video on why Panette is crazy. Really good, really strong. Brings a lot to the table with minimal effort. You know, one of the few units that can make use of Ike engraving because it adds so much weight. And because she usually gets doubled anyways, you're really not losing much. And with certain emblem rings, she can tank hits as well. Or in some cases, you know, her defense allows her to tank hits. So yeah, thanks for checking this out. Definitely like and subscribe. Feel free to drop a comment if you have any other weird builds for Panettes. And I'll see you in the next one.